Hey guys, sorry we're having some technical difficulties, but it is all right. We're back and ready to get moving. Let's worship. Doesn't 
stand a chance when I stand in your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide. I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind No, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken got a uh, short video for you guys. Um, Before we play that, let me pray with us real quick. Uh, Father God, thank you for allowing us to be able to live in a place where we can have a a, a place to worship online and uh, and live in a day and era where we can do things like this. So um, uh, may the world see that even though this virus is uh, becoming a serious thing, that you will not be stopped. So in Jesus' name I pray that we keep worshiping you. In your name, amen.
All right, good morning. So we uh, first, just real briefly, apologize, technical difficulties. I also think just because, I mean, every church in America is trying to stream right now. So uh, it probably, uh, the internet was probably trying to catch up a little bit too. But the great thing is we are here. We are live now. And here's the awesome thing is we have some, like you probably already know this, but we have some of the most incredible volunteers on the planet i mean we got people uh, been working all this week had a week's notice to get us live and be able to so us be able to see cg and everything else that we can see now today uh to have live comments that was important to us uh just to be live to where we could interact with you and it feel a little bit of normalcy during this unstable time but how incredible is it i, I was just listening to this worship service and just hearing them uh, worship right here in this little studio that we made in, in a week's time but it just reminded me that the gospel and worship cannot be stopped it, it, they, they may shut down where we can't meet in a particular building but right now we can still worship we can still gather we can still proclaim his word and so today i hope it encourages you it builds you up maybe challenges us but it's just incredible to be together so here's what i want you to do lean in still open up your Bibles, maybe even still take notes, uh, pull your family in close, and uh, we can also see your comments live, so we can kind of watch, and you guys can say amen and connect with that as well, and so uh, if we do jump into some technical difficulties, it'll, it'll catch back up here. Uh, too. So if you're joining us for the very first time, uh, we are the Bridge Church. My name is Daniel Kaznave, and I get the honor and the privilege to be the lead pastor here at our church. And today is our completely first online service. And we are in a series uh, called uh, The Journey. And we're looking at the Holy Week that Jesus' uh, motion, Jesus' time on this earth in the last week before he went to the cross and then the resurrection. And so we were talking through those stories last week. We talked about Palm Sunday and, and how we can rely on, on that God has created us to worship and that we get to stand on that promise that we always get to worship on what God has called us to. And so... Um, I want to stop and I just want to pray for us here during this time. And then we're going to jump right in. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 21, Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 through 22, uh, 12 through 22, if you see that there. So let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for your word, for your truth. And uh, we thank you that we get to worship with you this morning. God, I pray that you would speak during this time. I pray that as uh, technology, I'm praying for technology, that you move forward, God, and, and, and we see that uh, that becomes stable and how every church is, is trying to do this right now uh, in our country. And I just pray that uh, you would bring just a sense of calmness, that in each and every living room, God, where we stand, where we sit, I just pray that your peace and your presence just abounds during this time. I pray that we will rest in you. God, I'm praying for our country right now. I'm praying that uh, you would go before the virus, give the wisdom to our leaders and doctors and strength, God, encouragement to those who are hurting and in need during this time. And I pray that we can stand on your word, stand on your truth. And we ask all this in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said... Amen. There we go. And so I thought about the time that we're in. And it's okay with you guys. I'm going to walk around a little bit, just like we're on Sunday morning, okay? So I want you to, to keep up with me. But I, I thought about the time that we're in. And it's, it's so easy, especially now in our social media. I, I found myself many times this week opening up all my different news apps and news articles. And it's like I go down this rabbit hole of information. And then if I let it go too far and I let my mind be consumed with it, it's easy for me to almost sway and lose focus and lose my peace. I don't know if you felt like that, uh, but for me, just the anxiety and fear can creep in of where we are. And so for me, I, I, I can experience that this week, and it's so easy to do that. And I think now more than ever, it's so easy for us to, to lose that focus, to lose that, okay, where is my strength? Where is my hope? Where is my peace. 
And I thought it's no mistake that God placed this piece of scripture on my mind, this piece of scripture on our heart, because we're looking at Jesus and his road to the cross. And we talked about Sunday, Palm Sunday, as I mentioned earlier. And today we're going to be looking at the later part of Monday and then also the early part of Tuesday morning. And Jesus does some pretty radical, some crazy things uh, to help us refocus, to help the church during that time refocus and his disciples refocus on the main purpose. And so we're going to look at this particular story. And just to catch everybody up con in, in context here is we are going into this huge celebration in this particular story in the Bible in Matthew chapter 21, where there are over two million Jewish people who are coming into Jerusalem. And so it is crowded. It is a huge festival that they're preparing for. People are coming from miles and miles over here to do that. And so as they're going into Jerusalem, Jesus is walking in as well. And this is one of the first time he's going to the temple and going into the town and he's seeing something that he, it, it just, it kind of makes him go a little bit. He gets this uh, righteous anger about him. And so we get to look into this because maybe you think about Jesus and you thought about him just kind of sitting down and, and, and just this docile uh, uh, kind of mentality and person. Well, we see a little different side of Jesus here um, that shows some of his passion and some of his drive to keep you and I on the right path. And so I'm going to read here in Matthew chapter 21, starting in verse 12. You guys still with me? Give me a comment. Give me a like. Give me a thing on there. Um, as you're looking to leave things, I see some of your comments coming up. You guys are sharing some stuff, sharing some YouTube stuff. That's good. There you go. There you go. Very good. And you guys are working together. Teamwork makes the dream work. I like it. Okay. Verse 12, we're going to read here. You guys still with me? I see your comment. Hey, hey, Lindsay. Hey, Brad. Brad, you look good all the way from here. Okay. Okay. Verse 12. It says, And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and healed and he healed them. But when the chief priest and the children, when the chief priest and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant and they said to him, do you hear what they, these are saying? And Jesus said to them, yes, have you read out of the mouth of inf infants and nursing babies? You have prepared praise and leaving them. He went out of the city to Bethany and lodged there. Jesus is coming into Jerusalem. OK, and he gets to the temple and people are coming here in this this particular day and age. They would have to bring a they were having having to bring their sacrifice uh, to the temple to pay, to atone for their sin over the, the past year. And so they would have to purchase the animal that they were going to bring, okay? And so all of these people were coming in, and the, the local temple and the people who were around it, they were doing a few different things here. One is they saw an opportunity. They had like this mindset of, okay, hey, there's an opportunity here to make a lot of money. And so they would charge almost double what the normal price would be for this particular animal, for this particular sacrifice, because people were traveling for miles and days, some even weeks and months to get here. And they were taking advantage of that. They were saying, hey, they're not going to travel with all that extra animals and things that they need to bring. So we're going to overcharge, make extra money because the need. I mean, think about it. When you go to the airport, food is crazy high because the need is there. You go to um, a sports game, it's like $37 million for a thing of popcorn, right? And so we, we see this happen that the need arises and they were taking advantage of making money on it. And then not only that, because they were coming in from other countries, other cities, the currency was even different. And so they were under this Roman rule at the time and they would have to exchange the money into uh, Caesar's money. And that was even charging people. And so they had set up this, this market at the temple. And this temple where it was meant to be holy, this temple where Jesus sees and he walks in, he says, what is going on in my house? You see that they, they lost their focus. And it wasn't like they came out and said, hey, I'm just going to I'm going to do this because I want to derail everything. But no, they stopped and said, hey, 
uh, I, I, I just believe there's an opportunity here. And Jesus says, hey, let me refocus us on our purpose. In fact, something wells up in him. Look at this. He says that he overturned the tables of the money. Just imagine him coming in and flipping tables over and throwing those tables and they're crashing on the ground and just, just people lined up and they're watching Jesus, the Messiah, come in because he is so angered at what is going on and he's saying, hey, I need you to realize what the reason and the purpose for my house is. What, what, how, how powerful does that speak to you and I today in our time? Where Jesus says, hey, now more than ever, our focus, our heart, our pride, our, our time together is for you and I to focus on what God's house was originally meant to be. And he, and he gives us two things here, okay? He gives us two things to realize that what he said. He says, my house will be a house of prayer. And that you and I, our response to any and every situation is to go to God in prayer, to cast our cares onto him. For us as the body of believers to come together, united, locked arm in arm, to, to reach out and cry out to our Father because we believe he is all powerful. We believe he can take our fear. We believe he can take our hurt. We believe he, we can take our shame. He can take our doubts. He can take all of that, that we become and continue to focus and go, okay, during this time, right now, it may be unstable, but I can stop and I can pray. I can link arms when you're in your living room on quarantine. I'm in my living room. We can come together united in prayer, the Holy Spirit interceding on our behalf and bring, still bring us together to intercede, to pray. I love this quote by Martin Luther. It says, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. And that's just an encouragement for us as believers to say, hey, during this time, oh, I'm going to lean in and I'm going to pray because I believe God can still work. I believe that God can still heal. God can still move and work in mighty ways. And then Jesus does a second thing. He does a second. I'm getting ready to like jump around this place. Okay. Uh, he does a second thing. And he says, when the people came to him who were hurting, who were lame, who were who could not walk, who could not see, what did he do? He healed them. He reached down and he healed them that our church, our purpose is to be a, a, about prayer, is to focus and, and lean in on that. And then also that we can be a checkpoint for healing where people can come and say, hey, this is going on in my life. And I'm not even just talking about physical healing, but I'm talking about spiritual spiritual i'm talking about mental when we come with emotional things that are that are holding us back that we need to be healed from we can bring those before the feet of jesus and we as the church come together surrounded in prayer and go you know i'm gonna pray for you about that specific thing you know what? I'm going to come together and we're going to lean in because our purpose is wrapped up in the purpose of the church. If you're taking notes, uh, maybe you see it on the screens there. Uh, maybe you don't, but if you're taking notes there, our purpose is wrapped up in the purpose of the church. That we are the body of Christ. When we step into son and daughtership, we step in as the body of Christ. And now my purpose, Daniel Casney's purpose, is now grafted and wrapped up in the the purpose of the global church. How incredible is that to know where you're sitting in your living room, in your PJs, with your coffee, with your hazelnut creamer, right? Like you're sitting, that's just my cream, my but you're just sitting there and you're, you're in his word, but you know you still have a global purpose because you're connected to the global church as a believer in Christ. And you and I walk in that purpose. And part of our pathway to purpose is to understand our purpose inside the local church. And, and we see this unveil here as Jesus is going, hey, let's let's not lose our focus. Let's lean in. Let's 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 focus on prayer. Let's hey, you need let's carry each other's burdens. Let's pray into those because I can't heal you. But what I can do is connect you to the one who can. And his name is Jesus and I can pray for you and I can call on the name of Jesus and we can bring that in together as we lay those at the feet of who Jesus is. Are you guys still with me on there? Just make sure you comment on there for me. Hang out. I, I can see some of you just got a little bit of a, a delay and a lag, but uh, that's okay. And one of the things here, 
as we switch and kind of read on for just a few minutes. And uh, I'm going to try to wrap up here uh, in the next few moments. But sometimes you know how it is. You guys get me excited. And I just, we just keep going all day, right? For, just kidding. Okay. Um, Jesus sees this. And then he continues on. And, and, and people see what he is doing. And the, the ch- lead priest and chief see what he is doing. And then it says, I love this, the children crying out in the temple. The children come and recognize who Jesus is. Their faith is in that moment of going, wow. They look, they see, they believe, and they acknowledge who Jesus is. And they say, Hosanna. Son, Hosanna to the son of David. And Hosanna, directly translated, means save us. Jesus is sitting there healing. He is refocusing them on prayer. And then they recognize who he is. And they're saying, Jesus, you're the Messiah. Save us here. And you and I can make that same prayer, that same cry. Jesus, save us. Be with us in this moment. And Jesus, he stops there. Because they're like, Jesus, you you can't say that. This This is blasphemy. And Jesus is going, it would be if I wasn't the Messiah, if I wasn't the Son of God. And then he responds to them. This is out of Psalm 118, as Jesus is quoting. He says, Out of the mouth of infants and nursing babes, you have prepared praise. Jesus points us again almost to the childlike faith of going, hey, I am dependent on who Jesus is. I am dependent on my Savior. I'm dependent on the one who can save us right here in this. I'm dependent on the one who is still on the throne, the one who is still sovereign in this moment. Amen? I want to continue on here, and and we're going to read. So Jesus here in this story in uh, Matthew chapter 21, he he finishes up Monday there in the temple. And then he goes uh, down into Tuesday. And the the Bible explains to us that he starts here early in the morning. And here's what uh, Scripture says in Matthew chapter 21, verse 18. It says, in the morning, as he was returning to the city, he became hungry. Come on, Jesus became, me. look, I can relate on that. Right. Like Jesus became hungry every two hours. My stomach starts grumbling. Jesus. I love this, though, because it shows us the the humanity of Jesus, how Jesus was fully man, yet fully God. And that he he, he walked through the struggles that we walked through and his body is being tired and famished. And as we get closer to the cross, that becomes huge because he felt every piece of that as fully man, but yet fully God. He became hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the wayside, so he sees fig tree. I'm going to get me some figs, some fig newtons, you know, some cookies uh, back in the day. Give me uh, seeing a fig tree by the wayside. He went to it and found nothing on it but only leaves. And he said to it, may no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither at once? And Jesus answered them, truly, I say to you, if you have faith... And do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Jesus comes up to this fig tree. And he's a little bit hangry, okay? Like he, last night he was flipping tables. This morning he comes, he's hungry, he sees the fig tree. The fig tree does not give him food, does not produce fruit, right? And he gets upset and he speaks into the tree and says, you will never produce fruit. And in that moment it withers and dies. And the disciples see this and go, what just happened, right? Like how did this even come about? And Jesus shows this. And many times in the Old Testament, the fig tree was a representation of Jerusalem. At many times they would use the fig tree as a representation of, of Jerusalem. And Jesus is saying, hey, the purpose of this fig tree is to what? To produce figs, right? To produce that fruit, to, to grow up, grow its root strong, grow up tall. His branches go out so that the figs can be grown out of that and produce fruit. And the purpose of this tree was not fulfilled. And Jesus is going, then why are you even here? And he points back even to Jerusalem. And he's using this as a picture of going, hey, Jerusalem is not fulfilling its purpose. They're not realizing that I am the Messiah who has come to fulfill the law. 
And he, and he gives us this direction of going, hey, part of our purpose as living as the church is allowing God to bear fruit inside of our lives. And so you may be sitting here wondering if it's that big to where Jesus speaks to this tree and says, hey, you, you're going to wither up. You're not going to be anymore. If it's that big, that important, how do we bear fruit? But Jesus is so good and scripture is so powerful, okay? Because in John 15, um, Jesus uses this same imagery, okay? So I want to read this for you and then we're going to kind of talk it down and then we're going to close. You guys still with me? Give me a little comment in there, a little like, a little heart, a little thing right there. Brad, I saw your comment about your dog. He's all Awesome. Okay, John 15, abide in me. This, this, this scripture right here is so powerful. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. This is Jesus talking. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, it is that it is he it is that bears much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. He just shows us this right in the fig tree and he uses the imagery again and then he goes on and says, and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. Verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask. Here he says it again. He closes Matthew, the part about the fig tree in verse 22, and then he closes uh, this little section in verse 7, and he says, hey, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. If you're taking notes here, bearing fruit starts in our intimate relationship with God. If maybe we're looking at our life and we're thinking, oh my goodness, hey, as I'm looking and thinking and going, how do I stay connected to God to where I can live in in my purpose and I actually see the fruit of God in my life as we read uh, that the Holy Spirit produces fruit in us love joy peace patience gentleness self good faithfulness we see these things and I believe that even during this time we as the church get to stand and that be the fruit of our lives. Even in times like this, that bearing fruit. But he gives us a prerequisite here, right? He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you he says hey if you want to see the fruit of god of walking in god's will in your life then realize it starts with abiding in me and let me tell you how that is good news it is so good because you and I can get focused. Uh, my, I remember my son, he's eight years old, and he came downstairs two days ago, and he said, hey, uh, he may be listening. Lucas, I love you. Okay. Uh, he came downstairs, and he said, Dad, today I'm going to do good. I'm going to do good. And I, and I thought about it for a second, and, and so many times I think you and I do that. We come up to God and go, okay, this week I'm going to do God. I'm going to do good. I'm going to check it off the list. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try hard. I'm going to be there. I'm going to work. It's going to happen. I'm going to will this thing into existence. Jesus goes, hey, 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 what I want you to focus on is abiding in me. And when you abide in me and you yield and surrender to my will, I will produce the fruit in you because it's not you producing it, but it's the will of the Father and the Holy Spirit dwelling in us that produces that fruit in us. And it's when, instead of you and I going, I'm going to work, I'm going to pray this specific prayer, I'm going to do this, I'm going to walk this, and God is going, hang on. Abide in me. Rest in me. Focus on me. And I, I love here, he's so specific, and he says, if you abide in me and my words, my message, my truth abides in you. If you abide in me and my words, he's saying, let's get even more specific. When scripture abides in our hearts, it's what produces and the Holy Spirit manifests that inside of our lives and inside of our hearts. And so another one here, the evidence of relationship is in the fruit. 
and how we know, hey, if I don't see that, I need to go back to my connection. God, I feel this fear. I feel this anxiety. I feel this hurt, this doubt. God, I need to get back to you. I need to get back closer. I need to get connected back to the vine because my purpose flows from you, God. And I need to get back to what you are doing so that I can rest in you. And while I'm doing that, I can rest in what you have called us to do. And that we as the church get to stand on that because I'm getting ready to close here. Uh, but this is what I want you to see. And this is what we, you and I get to stand on. Because in moments like this, the church comes together and is extremely resilient. And I mean, in a week's notice, churches all across America, they're not closing doors and going, nope, that's it. No, go. No, we're going to find a way to get the gospel out. We're going to find a way to gather. We're going to find a way to worship. And it, it, I'm, I'm not extremely, you guys who know me, maybe listen a lot, you don't know me. I'm not a crazy like crier. But moments like this made me get emotional because it's like the gospel is moving forward. His church will not stop. And even though our world is shaking right now. You and I get to stand on the unshakable word of God. We get to stand on the solid foundation whose name is Jesus Christ. Our fears don't stand a chance because we're standing in his love. We're abiding in his love. And when I'm standing to next to the source and in the source and the source is in me, that is what flows in me, through me, through my mind, through my heart heart and I get to dwell in my purpose to walk in his will and you and I we have this uh, unique opportunity right now to bear the fruit of Christ and people look at your life and go you have joy and it's okay to be honest and say yeah I, I'm scared I'm I'm anxious I'm worried but here's what I did I got back to Jesus or here's what I did. I got back in his word. And then the world sees, sees this, this fruit bearing in your life. And they go, hey, I, I need that in my life. I, I, how, where are you getting this? It's like you are unshakable. It's like you, every time you get flustered, you're, you're able to go back to a source and get filled back up. And that's our opportunity to say my source, my hope, my rest is in Jesus. And so I want to end today, and this is what I want to do, and the band's going to come back up here in just a minute. We're going to sing together. But I, this is huge because God's word says, if you abide in me, and you may be sitting in your living room, you may be, you may be worried, scared, anxious, doubtful, and you've never given your life to Jesus. And the only way to experience this is, is to realize that my life is lost without Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way to get to the Father is through him. And we realize that, hey, in this season, that what I thought I could cling on to, I can't. I must cling on to Jesus. And maybe you've never given your life to Jesus before. And so I want to pray a prayer with you right where you are. You could be in your living room, in the hallway, on the stairwell, wherever you are, listening on your phone, the computer, the uh, TV, whatever it looks like. I want you to, to pray this prayer. And there's no, there's no, um, there, and this prayer doesn't, doesn't unlock something, but it's you going before your father and, and accepting the free gift of grace that he has already placed on the table by dying on the cross and resurrecting again. And so you and I, as we lean into that, I want you to believe that. I, my, my heart, my passion, my desire is for you to say, you know what? I, I'm, I'm lost without Jesus. And I'm realizing it for the first time. I'm, I'm living in sin and it's taken over my life. And now I'm ready to give my life to Jesus. And if you believe, God's word says, if you believe that he died on the cross, just like they were bringing these pigeons and these sacrifices in to, uh, to uh, pay for their sins. Jesus is saying, hey, I was the perfect sacrifice to pay for the sins of humanity, past, present, and future. My, my perfect sacrifice was enough. You don't have to continue. You rest and are healed through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so let's pray this prayer together. And it goes something like this. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I know that I'm disconnected from you. God, I, 
sin is in my life, Jesus, and I'm giving my life to you. God, I ask that you save me, change me. God, I pray that you help give me direction and wisdom during this time. God, help me to rest in who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer today, we're going to post in the comments. We posted it earlier in there. You can also go to our website that's linked there, and there's an online connect card. Well, I want you to click on that connect card, and I want you to go through there because no matter where you are, we want to at least pray with you, connect you to resources. If you're local here in the low country in Bluffton, South Carolina, we believe that we were created to walk in community, and we want to help you walk in that community, help you take those next steps. And so fill that card out. Even though we're, we're separated right now, um, we can find a way to connect with you through that time. And so uh, click on that connect card and fill that out. And uh, also, if you're, you're hanging out in the house, I want to give you, we'll post these on our live feed as well uh, in the comments, but uh, I just want to give you a couple questions. As we're hanging out, maybe you're sitting on the couch um, or you're hanging out in the living room. There, there's just a couple of questions I want to give to you here today that maybe you can talk about with your family uh, centered around uh, what we were talking about today. But the first one is, how can you, you and your family, if that is relevant to you, how can you and your family facilitate time to connect with God this week? How can you get close to the vine? How can we come together during this? And two, um, are there areas in your life where you find it hard to live out God's will? Where Are there areas in your life when you say, hey, I, I, I know I'm, I'm walking in Jesus, but when I go to work, it, it is extremely hard. Or when I, when I do this, or when this happens in life, this is... Uh, something that almost holds me back and it's a chance for you to to bring that before God and maybe even talk about it with your spouse or with your family or we connect online or through the phone and we just say hey what are, what are some next steps to help allow that to happen and the last one here what is one faith step you can take this week to live in God's will what is a faith step for you and what does it looks like and then it says hey I want to bring that before God and so as we lean in together and that last verse I'm we're going to pray. I want to pray a particular scripture over us this morning. And both, when Jesus talks about the fig tree and in John 15, he, he ends up both of those um, topics and he says, whatever you ask for in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. And he ends it here in verse 7. It says, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. But he starts it first by saying, hey, you must be connected to me. Because now if I'm abiding in Christ, I'm praying in God's will. And I'm leaning in and going, God, I'm believing that you can do this on our earth, in our country, in my house, in my life. God, I'm believing in that because I'm connected to you. And I'm walking and believing and praying in his will. And we're joining him in what he wants to do during this time and in this season. I want to pray this prayer. This is We have it on the screens for you, but if you want to write this down, this is I just read this as a prayer, and it's, it's such a powerful, encouraging prayer that maybe you want to pray this week. Uh, pray over your family or pray over your kids or your spouse. And it's Romans 15, verse 13. And so I'm going to pray this, so let's pray together. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. God, we believe that and we want to rest in your hope. God, I pray that we use this time that's a little different and we use it to stay connected to you. To stay connected to the, the true vine, which is you, Jesus. We love you. We ask all this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to continue to worship together.
working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Cause you are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every yard, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, turning lines around. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending every part, I worship you.
we just want to thank you again for watching online with us this morning. I know we had a couple technical difficulties, but thank you so much for sticking it out with us and joining us today in worship. We've got a couple announcements. The first one is that you can still give your offering. You can give online or you can text to give or you can mail it to us. The address is on your screen. So feel free to still give. We um, just want to encourage you to do that. The next thing is that if you are joining us today, maybe it's your first time joining us, or maybe you're not a part of the bridge yet, but you want to get more information about what we're doing and who we are, we want to encourage you to fill out the Connect card. The link is in the comments. We've posted it a couple times. Or if you're watching from YouTube, it's at the top of the page. We want to encourage you just to fill out that Connect card so that we can be connected to you especially during this time when we're all social distancing. Um, this is a great way for us to reach out to you, know who you are, and know how we can best serve you as a church. Um, and the next thing is that we want to stay connected with you. So if you are part of the Bridge family, even if you're not, we want to encourage you to check out our Facebook page. Um, for parents, we're really engaging you on our Bridge Kids page. So get on there. There's lots of resources. We've posted lots of fun ideas for you as parents just to kill some time. We know that you have all day now with your kids. And so we want to encourage you just to use those moments to really love on your children. Build memories during this time. We know that this can be scary. We know that this can feel weird and different. And so we want to encourage you as parents and as families just to spend time together, build some memories, make some awesome things happen. Um, and use this time just really to pour into your kids the things that you want them to know. Um, we know that they're doing school at home, but we also want to encourage you to take some of that time and pour Jesus into them. Show them who Jesus is, show them the love of God, and use these extra moments really to be a catalyst in your family and um, in the time that you have with them. And the last thing is that we want to encourage you to invite somebody to watch with you next week. Um, be looking out. We're going to be posting week-to-week um, -week updates. We're not sure what the future holds um, and how long we'll be doing these online services. But we want to encourage you just to keep looking out um, and watch out for what we're going to be doing next week. Um, and invite somebody to watch with you online tag some people in this post, um, tag some people in our feed. They can always watch it later, watch the recording, start a watch party and watch it with your friends. Um, whatever it is to help you get people that maybe wouldn't step inside our church doors um, just to watch online with you. So we hope that you guys have a great week. Thank you so much again for joining us online and y'all have a good one.